uh, most emotions are very algorithmic. We, we don't see them that way because they seem irrational. But fear is a moment in the future is perceived to be less safe than now. When you logically perceive that, you feel fear. Our biological machine is wired to sense that before your logical brain engages. As a matter of fact, your amygdala will perceive a fear 90 seconds before your, your prefrontal cortex perceives it. So that's why, you know, if something shows up behind you, you jump with, without thinking. But the same algorithm is true. A moment in the future is less safe than now. A machine can definitely perceive that, right? I can easily program that in the machine. And if you give the machine a task to, for example, merchandise your store, it will absolutely, as it becomes more intelligent, it, it intelligent, it will look for possible threats in the future that might prevent it from, uh, from merchandising the store. That will be analogous to fear. And all of the other emotions, you know, anger. Anger is a difference in value set. It's a form of fear, but instead of fight or flight response, there is a hiss response. Let me, you know, scream so that you, you run away. Um, instead of me running, flight or flight, I want you to run, that's anger. And it is a, a, a sense of difference in value set combined with a, a sense of um, feeling unsafe around someone or something, some situation, leads to anger. And you can take all of them. You can take all of them, all emotions, perhaps other than love, can actually follow an algorithmic path. Remember, the way a cat responds to anger is different, or fear, is different than the, the way a pufferfish responds. It's different than the way we respond. And it's also going to be different than the way a machine responds. So, uh, you know, um, um, fear for a puffer fish makes it puff. For a cat, it hisses. And for a human, we fight or flight. For a machine, it might move its code to another place. A different reaction, but the logic of the emotion is the same. I, I even dare say, and I know it sounds really shocking, that, we, that the machines will have a wider range of emotions than we do. And, and the reason for that logic is we have a wider range of emotion than a goldfish uh, because we can understand concepts like the future. And so we can ponder emotions like optimism and pessimism because we can have an image of the future. A, you know, a goldfish doesn't do that. And because the, the intellectual bandwidth of the machines is likely going to be bigger than ours, they may feel things that we don't really understand at all. I think that's about to happen as well. Having said that, I should also remind you that, as I said in the beginning, emotionally intelligence has not been the, uh, the, the big investment of AI, the AI community so far, even though, in my view, uh, the natural evolution of the intelligence of the machines will lead them there eventually. Is there any good way you, you know how to measure the emotions? I do not know the answer to that. My last book is about stress. And, uh, and we talk very clearly, we have a, a, a chapter called Emotional Stress. And, and the idea is that we in, uh, in the modern world, sadly, uh, have been trained to think when we go to school. We haven't been trained to feel. Uh, we have uh, been trained to, unfortunately, suppress our emotions. Uh, you know, somehow, because in the workplace and in school, emotions can lead to a lot of unpredictability. Uh, we started to tell our kids at a very young age, sit down, don't cry, just be what we tell you to be. And, and for a lot of us, we somehow um, are not able to even sense our own emotions. Uh, I found that, the, for me specifically, which lived uh, you know, 30 years of being a very highly efficient, effective uh, corporate professional, I, I found that I can feel, but I wasn't allowed to express my emotions in the workplace. As my connection to my body and my feminine side and my emotional side continued to grow, uh, I, I think that my very first measure was my emotional body connection. So, you know, I, I, many books on the topic, uh, The Body Keeps the Score is a great one. Uh, the idea that when you trap an emotion, uh, it basically grows, and then eventually it manifests in the form of a feeling, a sensation. You can easily see it, you know, anxiety is, is you know, felt somewhere in your core, anger is uh, in all over your body with energy, fear makes you want to coil, and so you can't really measure it, but you can sort of refer to it. Uh, my co-author in Unstressable basically uses a technique that she calls the which, where, why and what, which, where, why and what, which is a sort of a form of a meditation that she recommends you do every evening before you go to bed, where you can sit with yourself and say, 
how, uh, you know, which emotion am I feeling? Is this jealousy or anger? Is this fear or anxiety and so on? Where in my body do I feel it? Why do I feel it? What's the logic that's triggering it? And what is it trying to tell me? Not what do I do about it. By the way, most emotions just want to be heard and acknowledged. What do I do about it? Uh, having said that, can we, fear, can we measure that in AI? I ha don't think anyone's working on this at all. And I think this is a question that I have never given any thought to before. So well done. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>